so my issue with Anne Frank is not that my I issue don't... With my Anne issue Frank. with Anne Frank. To <laughs> have a bath and go home. <laughs> <laughs> Mahatma, put on some shoes, you're in court. (laughs) Hello and welcome to Patchwork. This is a podcast where old friends sit around and sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. We'll perform live sketches, play some games and tell each other some stories. We have a full ball of yarn, but we don't quite know yet what we're sewing. So, welcome to Patchwork. My name is Dion and with me is Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. I had a very interesting tram ride today for two reasons. The first was that I was listening to some music and I heard an outrageous noise and I looked up and I I, I couldn't compute the noise to what had happened. So in front of me, an old lady with a walker had fallen backwards. So she was standing front on facing the front of the tram and the jolt of acceleration threw her backwards. But I had my head down and for a very brief second, I thought I heard the late Michael Jackson yelping. (laughs) That was the noise she made. That was the exact noise that she made when she got thrown backwards. I think everyone on the tram was really surprised to hear that come out. To hear the king of pop (laughs) return back on the number six tram. The second reason that it was a really <laughs> the second reason that it was a really interesting tram ride is because for the first time in years I saw tram inspectors get on the tram. I haven't oh. seen them for a really long time since Mikey our ticketing system got introduced. The funniest thing about these tram inspectors were that they, the ticket inspectors were that they had They're these... all dressed as Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They were wearing these great big lanyards, each of them, again with the lanyards, <laughs> but it lanyards. looked like they'd purchased them from a, a shop and it was like stereotypical childhood sheriff's badge. Do you think you'd make a good ticket inspector? I feel like you'd be too, you'd be, you'd feel too bad about finding people. Of course. Yeah. I, I think I'd be useless. I, I always find a way to let, uh, let someone have the benefit of the doubt. I'd give the benefit of the doubt in terms of like a reasonable thing of like, this is actually going to be a huge waste of time for you. For instance, if their card is broken or something and they legitimately tried to do it and it didn't work, mm. and this is actually what happened to me. And I got off the fine. It was just a huge waste of time. And when I said to her, I was like, what am I meant to do? It, it's, uh, it's like after seven, the place around the corner mm. to get a new one is closed. How about I get the tram in and go to the station and get a new one? Why don't you come with me? Because it's not my fault. She's like, oh, you have to write in about that. Yeah, okay. But what would you do in my situation yeah. where your ticket is broken and it didn't work? What can you do? Yep. Go years with a broken ticket using that same excuse Brilliant. on every single train. Genius, isn't no, it? it? But it that's is. why I was like, well, walk with me to the station now and we'll get a new one together. Yeah. Why would she walk with you to the station? Because what else is she fucking doing riding the train? <laughs> Good job. Yeah, to help me. Come with me then. <laughs> I love that you're an old lady. She needs to <laughs> walk you to the train. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> So the other week, a friend of mine um, invited me to go for drinks at a colleague's um, birthday drinks. So I rocked up and met a few of his colleagues and his colleagues were really lovely um, and met the birthday girl and she was really nice. Um, But I noticed that her mum and her dad was there. So I started talking to the dad and found out I actually had a lot in common with the dad. The dad would have been 65. So I had that in common. Um, He was CEO of a company. I had that in common. Um... But we've turned to fishing and he was a very avid fisherman and I really love fishing as well. But one thing is really hard is it's hard to find people who have boats because they're Mm. expensive and it's hard to find people who are fishermen. So you usually (laughs) target these 65 year old men who (laughs) usually target, (laughs) you you, you target. So so you go out and you target snapper with a particular rig, but it's on a Saturday night head now. Where's the fisherman? Okay, let's go. But you target these... (laughs) You target, Down to the wharfs. 
you target these men who have they have a daughter. They usually don't have they they usually they usually don't have a son, and they and they're looking for that that younger man in their life that they can go out that oh, cute home. young boy to go fishing with that they can go fishing with. So I started talking to him. He was really he was really nice, and 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 I was trying to intimate that I would really love to go fishing with him, and I was like, what about? I'll tell you what, I'll buy you like a slab of beer. We'll go out fishing one time. And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Let's do it. And we'll I get was a bit drunk. I, yeah. <laughs> but it was really cute because then he called, then he called his wife over and, and he sort of introduced me as his oh. new friend. His new son. Is yeah. fishing a euphemism? Yeah. <laughs> And she and he was like, "Oh, this is Dion. Uh, looks like we're gonna go, be going fishing together." <laughs> so anyway, it so, was he nervous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me his card and he was like, "Text me." I was like, "Oh, great!" <laughs> so I've come to this party to support my friend. I've I've ended up getting the birthday girl's dad's number. <laughs> and then the next day, great time last night. Can't wait to go <laughs> fishing <laughs> together. So, Winky face. <laughs> so, so anyway, the next day, I decided to text him. I was like. Hi, John. Great to meet you. Uh, just to let you know, I'm still very interested in going fishing with you. Um, if you could let me know when suits, that would be great. And so waiting for a text message and it, like waiting till the end of the day, I was like, oh, wow. He has a- Imagine oh, he that's- gave you a fake number. It's, yeah, it's, it's very <laughs> A strange. fake business card for all those young boys that go fishing for fishermen. <laughs> So I thought it was really strange. So then waited another day, no reply. So then I got my friend to get in touch with the daughter. He's playing hard to get to. Yeah, <laughs> and, say, and say, to, say to her, what the hell is going on? And she was like, oh, look, he's very busy at the moment. He'll get around to it. Till this day, he hasn't replied to my message, which did is the... Str- did you send another one? I, no, I didn't. Oh, no, I, I didn't feel comfortable sending a 65-year-old CEO <laughs> a follow-up a message. Follow up message saying, hey, just hope you got my, my message. <laughs> Lol, um, my friend stole my phone. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I thought when you get to that age, I thought that like that stuff of peop- of you know bad communication, I thought you would have got to the point where you're like, uh, I'm, I'm, over, I'm over this sort of bad communication. I'm just going to reply and say, hey, look, thanks so much. Bit busy at the moment, but received nothing. What do you think happened with this dad? Why do you think he decided not to follow up with me? Did he find a better young boy to go fishing with? <laughs> Maybe. Josh, what do you think? I think he was just busy when he received it and then completely forgot about it because you weren't that memorable. But I was. We got on so well and I was I, I was going to be like, I was going to be this boy that he could develop into one of the great fishermen. Son. I feel like this harks back to something that I like to do on a night out, which is get drunk people together and watch them make plans that I know will never actually come to fruition because I love seeing two drunk people who have nothing in common get together and be like, yeah, I love that band too. We should totally go to that gig together. And then just letting them take the next step, go, all right, get your calendars out. You did that. Organize this. You did that the other night. I did. Where you got someone's number on the dance floor. What was the purpose of getting that number? Oh, Yeah, that's right. Was it a girl? Oh, Josh, you know her. Or was it a 65-year-old CEO? <laughs> <laughs> um, so so this, this harks back to my uh, the worst weekend I've ever had. I gave my number to a girl on a dance floor uh, in order to fill in for her futsal team. But you knew her. Uh, no, was- no. But I had filled in for the futsal team, that team. previously. Yeah. 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 And apparently I said yes to playing on the Sunday. And then just completely didn't show up. Never turned up. Because I live, I live with his friend. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, yeah. "Oh, Christian uh, didn't turn up to futsal on Sunday." I was like, "Oh, really?" She's like, "Yeah, we organised it on on Friday night on the dance floor." I was like, "Oh, really? Oh, that's weird. I would have thought he would have come." She's like, "Yeah, he got his phone out and put it in his calendar." <laughs> yeah. But I asked you where that, why you didn't turn up on Sunday, and you said, "I don't remember ever having that conversation." <laughs> nah. I, until you told me, Dion, I go, "Oh, oh, that's right." I did agree to play futsal on the Sunday. So Dion made me feel bad about not turning up to futsal. But earlier that weekend, Josh, how did I let you down? <laughs> <laughs> so I was at a house party and um, I invited Christian along. Okay, let's go have a good time, have a few drinks, have a bit of a dance. Um, so Christian didn't know who the host was. Um, so everyone having a great night, having a bit of a dance, you know, doing whatever. The night sort of went on. It was getting kind of late. Now, in this particular house where the dance floor was, there was an internal uh, window into like the hallway. So it wasn't a, an external window. It was just an interior one, um, which was closed and covered in some black uh, plastic. 
Um, and so as we're just dancing around, I don't know how it happened exactly, but I think Christian thought, I'm just going to have a bit of a, a bit of a lean back. <laughs> Just lean back on on the wall, no, no, on the glass window. So, we're so going what, t- what time was this at? What, what oh, time? Like three, four o'clock, something like that. Um, and you just hear that unmistakable sound of. <laughs> Doesn't just, matter how loud the music was. Yeah, no. <laughs> and I just see Christian look to me with his eyes wide. I'm like, oh my god, what have I done? And we went around. No one was hurt or anything like that. And it was just the biggest dampener on the night that you just cannot recover from. And I remember <laughs> we were texting each other on the way home and it was pretty much exclusively us both going, hell, hell, <laughs> oh my God, hell. And me going, you're that guy. And yeah. you're going, I'm, I'm that, that guy. guy. <laughs> I was that guy. I hate that guy. Yeah. And, I, and for that night, I became that guy. So this weekend, I let Josh down, <laughs> I let Dion down, and also my fucking washing machine exploded at home. <laughs> So, Christian, I had a similar experience, but it wasn't in a party setting at your sister's place. Oh, my God. So, so I never thought this is something that I would tell anyone, but at the time... <laughs> Mind you, before you get into this story, I'd like to preface it by saying I have never told my sister this okay, story. All the more reason to tell the story. So, what happened was... Christian invited me over. Christian was house-sitting for his sister on this particular day. He invited me over and we were doing... We were actually trying to work out some theme Mm. music for the podcast. We were recording all such a stupid shit. So I went for a walk around the house and I gesticulated and I ended up knocking over a glass, hourglass thing uh, that would have been about 30 centimetres tall and it cracked and sand went everywhere and glass went everywhere. So Christian's sister would have been home maybe in four or five hours' time. And I was like, this cannot happen. What the hell can we do? Was there there sentimental value or was it just an ornament? Well, Uh, what did we do? Well, uh, Christian, I said to you, we have to get this replaced. So you message your sister. To answer you, Josh, sorry, it was was purely ornamental. No sentimental attachment. But my sister wasn't aware that Dion was coming over that day. (laughs) So I messaged Jasmine, my sister, asking, hey, Jazz, you know that hourglass? Whereabouts did you buy that from? Dion's really interested in it. He really, really <laughs> likes it. Yeah. Great cover story. So she, she messaged back and said, oh, it's from this place. This is how much it costs. I went out there straight away, <laughs> bought exactly the same hourglass. Hang on. Hang on. Before you went out, there was a very brief moment where Dion was like, eh, 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> But after I got over that, that's not true, by the way, Jasmine. Yes, <laughs> um, I, I went and bought the exact same hourglass, picked it up, uh, put it in exactly the same spot. And until this day, she has not known. So my question Great, is... Perfect cover. Well yeah. done, boys. My question well is, in that situation, I don't need to tell her anything, right? It's all like... it's. I've maintained the status quo. I I probably would. Yes. But I love that with the hourglass thing, it is almost like the perfect crime. It is. Of you've just yeah. replaced it with yeah. the exact same item. And it's it's very much like, yeah, this there is no difference. There is no change here for no her. And it's functionally the same. Yep. I'd love it if we found out that the hourglass was actually filled with cocaine originally. <laughs> That'd be great. And, and now we find out because she goes to snort the sand. <laughs> It's Monday morning and two work colleagues meet in the lift. And because they have nothing to talk about, I'm going to give them three words each to fuel their Monday morning blues. So, Christian, here are your three words or phrases. Thank you. Josh, your three words or phrases as well. Hey, Christian. Hey, Josh. Good morning. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Big day today, though. Um, oh. You know how we're doing the big office clean out? Oh, no, it's yeah. hell. It's going to take ages. Like, I've, I've been tasked with um, updating all the fax machines. So. <laughs> updating the fax machines? Yeah, just, you know. What, what are you updating them with? Just, uh, firmware updates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've been tasked with uh, emptying out that room full of calculators. <laughs> That's good. It's important. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. It's going to be... I'm really glad because... You know the aircon stopped working. Isn't it hot today? It's got uh, so hot. Yeah, it's very hot. And I'm just it really glad hot. that I sort of I rode that middle line today because I was worried. I was like, oh, it's kind of hot outside, but I don't want to be too cold. If the aircon's, aircon's too cold, so I thought I'd wear my three quarter length pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> and so I think I've managed. To, I'll, I'll be in a comfortable temperature today. Which it is, is strange. Good. I've never seen someone wear three quarter length pants with a suit before. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but it's an interesting choice. I mean, I feel like the last time I would have seen three quarter length pants was at a synagogue <laughs> for a religious sermon. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> did you did you go to that um, that service on the weekend? The church at the service? synagogue. Yeah, the syna- yeah. I did go to that. Yeah, yeah. I was um, at a similar one. I'm not sure if it was at a synagogue because I'm not too sure of the specifics of it. But certainly there was. Um, there was a lot of Russian Orthodox <laughs> people there, <laughs> yeah. uh, which was handy. Oh, were they the ones that were shouting through the megaphone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so, I think so. Oh, all right, this is my stop. Oh, okay. See you, John. See you, Chris. So, Christian, last week I challenged you as part of the Roibus Challenge, mm-hmm. uh, and you were going to contact a company that you weren't happy with in order to obtain something free or justice from the company. How'd you go? I contacted Hush Puppies because I was having some issues with my laces. Now, I went to Hush Puppies. <laughs> as I've said, and I will continue to say, I chose comfort over style. <laughs> okay. These laces lasted me all of three weeks. I paid $190 for a pair of shoes. The laces, the the most basic part of the shoe, lasted three weeks until they exploded. (laughs) No, they didn't explode. Flames. Like that watermelon. (laughs) Uh, Small watermelons, yeah. (laughs) And I did a little bit of research and I decided that the best way to contact Hush Puppies would be through their Facebook Messenger. And so I wrote... Good afternoon, Hush Puppies team. (laughs) I very recently purchased my first ever pair of Hush Puppies. I had been encouraged by many friends to go with HP due to your your supreme comfort. After trying the shoes on, I certainly was not disappointed. It is very unlike me to spend $189 on a pair of shoes, but this pair in particular stole my heart. Having worn them sporadically for only a couple of weeks, I found that my heart was already breaking. How can such an expensive pair of shoes come with such poorly made laces? As you can see from the pictures enclosed, my new HP's laces appear to be bursting fraying. The brown laces that came as stock with the shoes are buckling and exposing a blue material within. The integrity of the laces on both shoes is compromised to the point that I'm not sure how much longer they'll last. I am no rougher than anyone else when tying up their laces, so I'm very confused as to how this could be happening so soon. Unfortunately, this has made my overall experience quite disappointing, as I would have expected more from a company that prides themselves on comfort. I would appreciate any feedback you have to give. I look forward to hearing from you. Christian. You know what? When you said I'm no Rafa, then I thought you meant, I thought you said Rafa, like the tennis player, Rafael the Tar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no Rafa. Right. <laughs> oh, Hush Puppies responded mm. Hi, Christian. Thank you for taking the time to contact us. We are terribly sorry oh. to, to that your laces are damaged. <laughs> oh, that's what they wrote? They took to time. that. Took their time, didn't mm-hmm. they? Mm hmm. We can completely understand your disappointment in this situation. We will ensure to pass on your feedback to our production team so this can be looked into. We strive to provide our customers with the best quality shoes. Can I please have your email address so I can pass this on to our customer service team who will assist you and send you out another pair of laces. Kind regards, Jamie. More laces from Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Have you received the laces yet? Well, I sent them my email. It took them... Two weeks to send the laces to your email. No, (laughs) to ask me for a delivery address. Oh my god! Oh wow! And again, they apologised, and I responded accordingly with my address. And after five more days of waiting, I finally received in the mail (gasps) a fresh pair of brown hush puppies laces. Wow! Thank you, thank you so much. So, Christian, um, that is a satisfactory. that is a satisfactory result. I would like to award you six out of ten rooibos leaves. <laughs> and the reason why well, I'm only well, where gi- did I fail? The, the reason why I'm only giving you six is because you only got one pair of ah, shoelaces. That's true. A pro would have got a new pair of shoes oh. sent out. Better luck next time, Christian. <laughs> Better luck next time. Uh, Christian, so is it about time now that you pass on the rooibos baton to Josh or the baton? Josh? Yes. 
uh, Roybus Challenge. Now, I'm relatively satisfied with all of the uh, items that I've bought in recent history, um, but I am just about to have to get a new router for our internet at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had this for maybe four or five years, but I've been very happy with the service. So what I'm going to mm. do, I'm going to pick up the Roybus Challenge. Oh. And I'm going to email Billion. I'm going to tell them I've been very happy with your 7800N. It's been a very good product to me. Um, and just see what they say. If I come with some positive vibes and say, so I've been very happy with your product and uh, see, see what wow. I can get back. Christian, what do you predict they might say? Do you think they'll say, look, thank you for the feedback. We look, we, we hope you have a great purchase. Here's, or do you here's, think here's some shoelaces. Or do, you- <laughs> <laughs> do you find that you, you make really great choices? With I the tend to do a lot of research before I buy mm. things. Like I take my time with all that kind of stuff. So I very rarely go out and buy stuff. And the other point, I don't buy a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah, Don't yeah, that's true. Things, so. But I'm surprised to hear you say that because I thought you would have done the research. Plus, I would have thought you'd be prepared to pay money for a good product as well in order to get in order to get the you result. Get, you get what you pay for. No, I and I believe that's, that's true, true with everything in life. No, I- <laughs> <laughs> what's that from? <laughs> like a Torben Pates it ad is, from the nineties. <laughs> How do I know that? <laughs> Now it's time for a casual quest, a Dungeons and Dragons style choose your own adventure where Christian and Dion are given a scenario and they have to work out how to get through it. Now this week, you're both first time skiers and you've just been pushed off down the slope and you've realised, I didn't learn how to stop. So you've got to figure out how to stop. Dion, what are you going to try? Uh, am I on skis or maybe or maybe on a snowboard? Because I struggle a little bit more on a snowboard. <laughs> are you on skis? Pair of skis. skis. Okay. Um, are there people that are standing around the mountain or is everyone just going down themselves? There is a guy who is very competent to your left who's speeding up, coming up beside you. Oh. And there's another beginner over to your right, a small child mm. um, who is going very slowly. So you're catching up to the child on the right. Okay. There's a fast guy, experienced guy coming down on your left. I think I want to interact with the child by pushing. Can I push them, <laughs> push them over? Not to save me. I just want to hit the, hit the child because it sounds really annoying. So you push the small child and the child flies off into the deep snow head first passed out yep. uh, but you did not slow you down at all if anything it gained you momentum oh christian what are you gonna try comparative to dion how far behind am i um you're like 100 meters up up the hill you can see him but Josh, you can't interact with can him. i deviate my course for the small child who has <laughs> fallen over <laughs> <laughs> yep sure so you you see this sort of little Ski jacket face down in the snow. <laughs> uh, you head across and you just straight over like a speed hump. Boom, boom. <laughs> just continue on down the hill. Dion, Dion what are you going to try good, now? That's good because I was going to try and get in front of Christian so he wouldn't help the little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to try now, Dion? Uh, so what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try... Um, a t- Do you want to see if you've got anything on you, maybe? Uh, yeah, I could. <laughs> but, but you I, don't want to. I want to try taking off one ski. Okay, so you, you reach down. Yep. And uh, you try to sort of fiddle with the clasp on the back of your foot. You're sort of wobbling a bit. Yep. You flick it. It happens to unclip. Oh. One ski goes flying out to the side. You are now on one oh, foot. No. Oh, my god! Zooming gosh, down yeah. the hill. Oh you just really unbalanced. Christian, what are you going to try? I want to look in my ski jacket, Josh. Yep. Um, you've got a bottle of Jägermeister. <laughs> uh, but you've got some extra pair of ski goggles. Um, you've got the day's newspaper. And uh, you've also got an iPod with headphones. Well, I'm going to throw the newspaper out to begin with because <laughs> it's not relevant anymore. It's a dying medium. <laughs> uh, next, I'm going to take my ski jacket off. Yep. Tie it to the bottle of Jägermeister. Yep. And try to throw it using the weight of the Jägermeister to wrap around a tree. Yep, cool. So you, you've tied it off, you whip it around, you're, you're fast approaching this very thin tree, the bottle catches, spins back around, you grab the bottle, now you've got each hand covering your jacket, boom, pulls you to a stop, nice little skirt, and you're stopped in front of the tree. Great work, Christian. Dion, back to you, who is hurtling down the hill on, <laughs> on one, one leg. Uh, are there any ski lifts around me? Uh, yes, just above you. Just above me? Yep. Uh, if I if I reach up with both my hands, can yep. I grab onto so someone's you, skis? Yes, yeah, so you see one coming towards oh. you, this lovely couple making out on it, <laughs> yep. and you see it, and you time it, and you jump, and you grab, and you grab them by the ankles. Yes. And then you just... Got it. You're hanging there. That's great. <laughs> just swinging. 
Christian's off to the side, and Dion's slowly working his way back up the top of the hill while these people look down at him going, what the fuck are you doing? Thank God. We're safe. So you managed to stop. Well done, boys. Well done. I found myself in that awkward position the other day where people are speaking about things that you're not entirely sure of yourself but you kind of just have to nod your head Go along, along and, yeah. and because pretend because you, you feel like you should you should know these things well well yeah in particular with this one here so a couple of friends of mine were discussing a certain historical figure who what he's done for for history and and this world is is very common knowledge but let's just see whether you know the significance of what he did the man in question Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, he was just a peace, uh, a- peace through inaction and peace fighter. What? <laughs> Excuse me, Josh. No, so his whole thing was a peaceful protest and that kind of thing, wasn't he? What was his? What was his? He's an Indian bloke, <laughs> mind you, mind you, Josh. You may have the answer. Yeah, now I'm you really unsure. Well, no, but you do you know who he one. was? Well, well, I knew that he was an Indian man. I knew that he was bald and he had Harry Potter glasses. <laughs> but when I, when, I, when I came to think of it, I said, okay, they weren't calling him Mahatma. They were calling him by <laughs> what his real name is, Mahandas. Oh, what? Oh, that's where did right. Mahatma come from? Mahatma is a term which translates to high soul. Oh. It's an honorific term oh, no that's way. been bestowed no on him. No one knows that. No but, one knows that. But what I, did, what I did find out was that he was actually an expatriate lawyer. In South Africa, before his entire non-violent civil, Mahatma put on some shoes. You're in court. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine him? Your feet threat- stink. <laughs> he's threatening the judge with his lunchbox, and he's just throwing an item in the bin every time the, the case is going against him. No, Mahatma, you need to eat. <laughs> Another historical figure who I had to look up very recently, Mr. Louis the Fourteenth. There was no. so I got, I got nothing many, on him. But there were so many Louis. Why does everyone refer to him? <laughs> French. What was so special? Wasn't he Fre- Great. French? Great. French. French. Yeah. French. French. 14th and French. French king. He was just an incredible And he got his dick for- chopped off or something, didn't he? Or he got his head chopped off or something? <laughs> I think he's one of France's long... Uh, he's one of the... He's the one of the longest-, longest women in France. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of, it's actually Lois the 14th. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's one of the longest serving uh, leaders in Europe throughout history. Come on, give us someone else. Have you got any other names there? Uh, I've got Anne Frank. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Sorry, you no, have no, to know no. what she did. Okay. Okay. So here is... So my issue with Anne Frank is not that what I issue don't... With my Anne issue Frank. with Anne Frank. Good? <laughs> Stick the knife in, go on. <laughs> my issue with Anne Frank... Is not that... See, I know what she did. She wrote a bloody diary about her time in World War II. Yeah. Sure. Do you, yeah. know what, do you know what is the most conflicting thing about Anne Frank? Is that there are so many photos of her. Why How? is that conflicting? How? How are there so many photos of Anne Frank? It's not her in the attic. No, but there's a lot of photos of her from before. It's 19... Oh, how suspicious. It's the, it's the 1940s. And you don't think selfie sticks were invented before then? <laughs> Just take selfies, Christian. But, Big flashbulk. <laughs> <laughs> On every single book, the diary of Anne Frank, a different... Uh, Anne Frank, this Anne Frank, that is a different photo of her. I haven't seen a lot Have of Have you heard Anne someone make a stupider point in life? What, what are you? What are you intimating? As a Jew, what are you intimating? <laughs> the problem with you, you know what she did. You know what she's famous for. She was fourteen, though, wasn't she? But yeah, something. Like, she was young. How could her diary have been as good as it is? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Okay. Jo- Joseph looked across at me today. <laughs> Honestly, that's what the diary could have been. In fact, it's it's this. So what are you saying? Are you saying she didn't write Anne Frank? Is this, is this well, the bombshell that you're dropping? She didn't write her own diary. She's a ghostwriter. <laughs> I don't know what I'm. Well, I don't no, know what saying, I'm getting to. So to what be do you know about her? She wrote a diary while she was she hiding was, from the Nazis. Yeah, very sensitive and, and, topic. That you're and obviously, when she of. was hiding, her parents took a lot of photos of her. <laughs> they, had, they had nothing better to do than take lots of photos of her. Christian, give us one more, one more person that we might know Can a little I give bit more you, about. 
two people that are often yeah. associated together. Yes. Uh, before actually, yeah. b- before I get onto these two people, <laughs> I just want to do a quick round the table to see if either of you can name a single person on the Australian banknotes who's not Banjo Patterson. Uh, so Howard Florey. Ah, oh, shut up, uh, Josh. Dame, Dame Nelly Melba. Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> really yeah. good one. Uh, all right. Well, uh, hold on. Uh, John, King, someone, Kingswood Smith. Incredible. Uh, that is incredible. This is grade six. It's all coming back. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's about as far as I get. Are they oh. all? Are they all airports? Australian airports? <laughs> well, did you say something, Melba? Dame Nelly Melba. She was an uh, opera singer. Uh. Why is she on a banknote? <laughs> Great response to that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm happy that I don't know her. Why is she on a banknote? Big, big personality. A lot, lot of photos telling. of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Read a diary. He did the opera house. <laughs> <laughs> the, but the, only came out concert to concert. <laughs> yeah. the, t- the, the, two, the two names that are often associated with each other, Burke and Wills. <laughs> Dion, who are they? Burke and Wills were exposed. Explorers and wasn't Burke? Was that the same? Do, was that Don Burke, the gardener? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but Burke and ex- Will's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> they're explorers and they found the opera center. I think. I think they stumbled across it. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. They, yeah, they, um, they explored a lot of early Australia, I believe. But my favorite thing about Burke and Will's, you know, something they actually packed for their trip that they took. A bath. <laughs> what? A bath. Really? They took a full bath with them. Really? A full bath of water in it as well? Did they take the plumbing? <laughs> <laughs> but it's so strange how we idolise these white explorers. Like, Indigenous Australians knew the land back to front. Why do we idolise Burke and Wills? What's the big deal with white guys finding different parts of land when it's been discovered tens and thousands of years ago? Yeah, I feel like with just walking across an even plain, there's nothing that special. I, I can I kind of understand climbing a mountain, you know, Sir Douglas Mawson. Yeah, flat surface. Imagine that. No, it's you like- guys are missing the point. The point is not flat surface. Mm-hmm. The point is we don't know what the fuck is out there. What and there was nothing out there. What was interesting? Wait, yeah, waste of time, guys. <laughs> waste of time. Give it up. Just have a bath and go home. <laughs> You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? You know what's really good? Not caring at all who the Illuminati are. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really good. Really good. You know what's really good? When you sign into a website and it takes you straight back to the page you were on. <laughs> really good. Yeah, really, really, good. Really, good. really good. Do you know what's really good? When your girlfriend is coordinated and can catch a ball with ease. <laughs> really good. <laughs> really good. Really good. Really good, really good Dion. You know what's really good? A brave choice in key ring that receives compliments. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. You know what's really good? When you're out to dinner with friends and when the food comes, you've clearly ordered the best meal. Really good, really good Josh. Really, really good. good. You know what's really good? When an attractive woman looks at you in a sexual way. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really good at specific to Dion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really we love hearing your really goods. And you know what Andrew Totino thinks is really good? When you take the elevator and no one else gets in. <laughs> really, good. <laughs> really good. Really good. Really good. Really good, Andrew. Really, really, really good. good. But you know <laughs> what? Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork this week. You can find us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes as it helps us become a trending podcast. We want to be a trending podcast, not a non-trending podcast. Um, Christian, what did you sew in your patch this week? This week, I sewed into my patch Michael Jackson moonwalking on the number six tram. <laughs> Great patch. Josh, what did you sew into your patch this week? Uh, my patch this week was Anne Frank holding a selfie stick. <laughs> 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 <Very good. laughs>
<laughs> and uh, Dion, what patch? What did you sew into your patch this week? Uh, the patch that I sewed was the image of a dad fishing on a boat on his own, <laughs> crying about how alone he is. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork this week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. 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 It's a good story. No, no, I know. No, no, I just... (laughs) What a good-looking boy. Oh, good boy.